Malcolm, thank you so much for being here with us this evening. And oh, thank, thank you, you so much for the for the film. I'll just start with a quick question myself, and then I'll open it up to the audience. But um, I mentioned at the beginning that you're known for your documentaries that detail LGBT lives and, and histories. What was it about this subject that inspired you as a filmmaker? Um, I think that um, kind of what's going on in America right now with uh, gay marriage, I mean, it's kind of going on everywhere, but gay marriage... Is, is such a big topic that's going in America. And when I, I, I'm not, I didn't really follow sports all that much, but you know, when Jason Collins came out, I kind of, you know, being like, oh my God, there's, you know, gay representation in professional sports. And then, you know, you just started kind of, it, this, a buzz started happening. And then when uh, Michael Sam came out, all of a sudden there was a realization like, wait a minute, like somebody's going to be going to the draft, like, you know, who is potentially, you know, who is an out athlete. And basically, I mean, the NFL, it's a very masculine sport. The kind of the thought of having, um, you know, an out gay football player being beamed into like American living rooms. I felt it was kind of a momentous moment and I wanted to kind of capture it. Well, I mean, it, it, there's just no out NHL play, I, like at the moment. So there was no reason to, you know, we were talking to athletes. Um, the NHL is actually, the organization is actually very, very kind of advanced in their, you know, they're very, um, I would say very, um, very positive in dealing with the game. They're, they're getting ready for it. And I think that's where the, that's where the next one's going to come out from, is from the NHL, in North America anyway. Just also to point out, uh, Patrick Burke, who runs You Can Play, is also uh, an NHL executive as well. So he has really helped kind of pave the way for them to be. And his father is a coach. Yeah, and, and, and his father is, is a famous coach. He was a coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, so his family is very actively involved in kind of paving the way for that person who comes out in the NHL, but it just hasn't happened yet. Well, we still got hockey in there. I mean, I think sponsorship is a very important part of, of sports. I mean, I think John could probably answer that more than the, the importance of sponsorship and sports. The sponsorship is important, um, but uh, I've never had any sponsorship from a sports um, company. Um, I've never had very much sponsorship. I'm a little too spiky, I think. Um, which is good. But I think the, the thing you need to remember with sports, the, the thing that really gets people when they have this decision to come out is not that they'll be broke. That we, we kind of accept the fact that the, the more it is known that you are gay, I, I played for a team at the end of my career that ended my career because I essentially sat and played all but the last two minutes of games, which just meant my stats dropped and dropped and dropped to a point where I was untenable as an athlete anymore. Um, so we know that's a likelihood. The thing for most people, I think, that they find is that sports is one of the few places where your occupation becomes your definition. Well, it's not something that you do, it's supposed to be something that you are. And the thing that people really fear is, is the idea that one day they will be this beloved individual simply for aspiring to be an elite sports person, and the next you might be a pariah. I, when I came out publicly, I, I went through, I was living in LA at the time, and I was going through the airport, and men were leaning over from the bars in the concourse to try and get pictures, and I was an average NBA player in my time, and this was two years after I retired, and I distinctly remember a woman shoved a child into my arms to have a picture taken. Uh, and then I came out, I spent a week in New York doing every interview ever, and I, on the way back I came through and men shuffled uncomfortably and pointed at me and laughed. And again, obviously a different woman with a different child, but was walking towards me and I looked at the kid and the kid pointed at me, you, I imagine because I'm massive. And, um, and the woman saw this happen, saw who I was and then grabbed her child and pulled him behind her as if me looking at it would make it gay. <laughs> so that's the thing that really worries you, the sponsorship. You can live without money, but living without your identity is tougher, I think. Yes, I mean, I, I reported it. There was a whole circus around it. The NBA has, this will sound really sinister, but the NBA has its own security 
services. Um, a lot of former police people, a lot of former FBI, and, and so they did a really good job of supporting me. It was really disturbing to have people send pictures of the back of my head saying I was right there. Um, it was even more disturbing when somebody sent a letter to my sister's house. Um, and I still get them every once in a while, but nowadays I kind of think, good, I'm still slightly relevant. <laughs>Um, we did speak a lot to, you know, uh, to Ben's uh, organization, uh, who uh, Billy Bean also does a lot of work with, so he's very tied to that organization, that's why we thanked him. Um, there are a lot of really great ally organizations out there, like Athletes Ally, like Ben Cohen Stand-Up Foundation, but ultimately I feel like this, the story of the film are, are these athletes, and as much as we would have loved to have talked about that, I think it would kind of maybe been a bit of a tangent, but I mean, they were very helpful in, you know, helping us, uh, you know, with, with Billy, and, you know, just supporting the project, you know, uh, they, they were all in attendance, uh, a lot of people of the organization at the uh, LGBT Sports Summit in Portland. Um, and they're great, great, great organizations, but I, I really feel like the heart and soul of the story is, is, is the gay and lesbian athletes, and so we kind of decided to focus on that. I mean, you have some great people in, in, the, in the film talking. Obviously, there's John, but we've got Billie Jean King, Martina Navratilova. Was it easy for you to get these people on board with the film? How was the kind of process of getting them involved? To be completely honest, I think that um, John was actually the first athlete we spoke to, and I think the fact that he, we had interviewed him um, made it okay for a lot of the other athletes to say yes. I, I would say absolutely he was a key um, to actually, you know, uh, he, he's, he's a very popular guy in the community and I think that it was very, 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 um, and a very outspoken man. So I think that having, the fact that we'd interviewed him absolutely helped us get the rest. And it, 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 that, that's the way it kind of worked. I mean, I don't think we would have gotten Jason Collins if we hadn't had John and I think that having Jason got it, like Billie Jean King was the, like it was the last two interviews we got were Martina and Billie Jean King. Like, Billie Jean King was the absolute last. So, I mean, we, we chased, we got everybody we wanted and, uh, but I would say John was absolutely a, a linchpin to it. It was absolutely a decision to not um, because I just don't think that this movie could have, I think that it, it that is something that should, that should absolutely be handled perfectly uh, in its own documentary. I, I think that to try and kind of sh cram it in here wouldn't do justice to the subject. And that's why we kind of, we, we, we absolutely had discussions about it and how we could make it work. And it wouldn't work like we, if, it, it would look like we were just trying to shoehorn it in. Like basically, we were telling a very kind of, we tried to have a natural progression of the history of, of gay athletes. And I think that, it, that would have gotten a little tangential if we just tried to insert that. But I, I mean, it's absolutely a worthy subject, and I'm sure that there will be a documentary coming about. Um, I mean, there's a there's a bunch of stuff that I kind of want to want to put together. My dream project uh, that I want to make that I mean, like I, I shouldn't even say it out loud, but it's something that I really want to make was a documentary about Madonna's relationship with the gay community. Because I think that she's such an... I'm Im about to faint right now. <laughs> but please, please do make that. Because it, it's... <laughs> but I'll that, help. That, that just I'll give seems... you money. It's fine. <laughs> but I, I just think that they're, like things like the sex book, which released that, the kind of the height of AIDS, and she had, you know, she was posing, making out with, like, you know, known gay porn stars who, who were HIV positive. Like, that book was such a permission. Like, it was literally, it was such a, a brilliant kind of accepting moment. And I just think Madonna has just been such an incredible voice uh, for the gay community. And I think that a lot of people are, are called champion of this, that's, but I think Madonna is truly has been, like, the champion um, in, you know, in the media who's just always been consistent and has just been a real friend, of, like, from the beginning of her career till, you know, it's just... They're so intrinsically linked, and I, and I would love to kind of explore that relationship because I think it's, you know, it's, it's truly a beautiful kind of coexisting.